we've got a record-shattering warm-up on the way, and this is going to fuel a huge storm as we head into next week, bringing the potential for anything from rain and severe weather to snowfall. In this video, I've got the details on that intense February warm-up and storm, the latest severe weather update, and a look at a new storm signal down the line. Everything right here. Thanks so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Check out the weather bell trial in the description for the maps I use, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's get right into it. Looking at the temperature anomalies as we head over the next few days, you can see temperatures going anywhere from around 25 to 35 degrees above average over a lot of the central United States as we head towards Monday and even towards Tuesday as that slides eastward. This record-breaking warmth is going to bring some really high temperatures, and I made this graphic to kind of show it to you here. Average temperatures are on the right side. Um, those Monday highs are on the left side in red, and you can see places like Dallas about 26 degrees above normal for this time of the year at 89. That's a record. Oklahoma City hitting 84 is a record high. Kansas City, Missouri, and Des Moines in the 70s. Those are records. Bismarck and Minneapolis there around 60 degrees. Not quite a record, but very close to it, and warming up a few extra degrees would certainly get you there. So really crazy stuff out of this record-breaking warmth, and this is really setting the stage for this upcoming storm system. Again, 80s and even some 90s down there into Oklahoma and Texas on Monday. A lot of those record-shattering highs there. Northern Illinois, southwest Wisconsin getting in on temperatures in the 60s and even near 70 as we go Monday and into our Tuesday here. And I mean, just look at how this is just setting the stage for our system with those temperatures, you know, down into parts of Arkansas, southern Missouri nearing 80 as we go in towards our Tuesday. That's record breaking in places like Little Rock. On up there into Michigan, even it's close to 65 towards 70 degrees in some cases here as we go towards Tuesday afternoon. Just really record breaking warmth here for millions of Americans and a big percentage of the country here seeing this warmth by the the time we go towards Tuesday. And then as eventually as we go towards our Wednesday here, you can still see that cold front visible as this front begins heading eastward. In fact, this is the most visible the cold front is on any of these graphics. Not record breaking out ahead of it, but you can definitely kind of tell where that storm system is lining up there with storms heading eastward out of Kentucky and Tennessee on the day on Wednesday. And again, here's a look at those temperature anomalies as we go Tuesday onward. 25, 30 degrees above normal into the Great Lakes on Tuesday. That heads off the east coast by Wednesday as that storm brings in that cooler than average air. Let's time out that storm using the European model here, my trusty Euro that I like to use in these videos. Playing everything out, Pacific Northwest as well as Mountain West snow as we go towards Monday and into our Tuesday here. You can see that band of snow stretching from parts of Utah and northwestern Colorado all the way on up there to northern Minnesota as we go towards our Tuesday afternoon. This is a low develops over Wisconsin, also bringing some warmer moist air indicated by some of that rainfall over the Ohio Valley Tuesday afternoon. And this is just the beginning stages of our storm system when it's really going to begin to kick on up is as we go late Tuesday night and into our very early hours of Wednesday morning with that southerly flow through the Midwest and towards the Ohio Valley. Also, watching this cold frontal line where we'll actually have a little bit of snow wrapping back around this in the parts of northwest Missouri and some of those areas that will have just seen highs, you know, in the 70s just recently there. Really crazy to see that into our, our Wednesday morning. Um, again, we'll be watching the thunderstorm potential there into parts of Missouri as well as southern Illinois, especially as we go overnight. Tuesday night and into our Wednesday morning, but really a whole stretch up there from northeast Oklahoma to Michigan. Should be watching out these for these storms um, from northeast Arkansas all the way on up there to parts of northern Ohio. Probably some showers and storms in towards our Wednesday morning. The European model also indicating some heavier snow breaking out over parts of northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan as the storm tightens on up in terms of, you know, the circulation and the strength of the system. And then as we go towards our Wednesday late day, you can see this cold front progressing pretty much in line with the east coast parallel to it at this point. A little bit of snow breaking out over eastern Kentucky into Appalachia there through places like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Still some very heavy rain along the east coast all the way on down to the panhandle of Florida. That system clears on out by the time we go in towards our Thursday. Now looking at the GFS for a little bit of a comparison, this is another model. Again, neither one of these might be correct. We're just kind of taking a look to see the comparison. You can see pretty much a very similar deal. You know, the GFS showing out of the Midwest and then in towards the Ohio Valley through parts of Tennessee as we go late Tuesday night and into Wednesday, that's when that storm line kind of makes the transition in that direction. Snow may be a little bit lighter up there over the upper peninsula of Michigan, but where it does show some heavier snow actually breaking out is since this storm is just a little bit slower timing-wise and getting towards the east coast, with that being on early Thursday morning, it actually brings a little bit of light snowfall up there into parts of the Appalachian region there, um, from parts of eastern Kentucky and eastern Ohio there into the Appalachia. So we'll have to kind of see how that plays on out if we get that cooler air to wrap in that quickly. That could be enough to bring a little bit of snowfall there. 
in terms of our mid-level wind in knots you can see with the GFS model this is really showing us that trough that is bringing that system notice how it really strengthens as we go towards Tuesday and into Wednesday as it heads along the east coast a positively tilted so a slightly weaker trough than what we could see but it's enough to bring this severe weather potential to Tuesday from parts of northern Arkansas all the way on up there to southern Michigan that's where the storm prediction center has highlighted that outline for the severe weather risk as we go over the next couple of days we'll get a lot more details regarding shorter term models um, like the HRRR and the NAM model coming in on this so we'll definitely have to see what those show in terms of storm timing you know the intensity of our ingredients as well um, and then on down there from parts of southern Kentucky all the way into northern Mississippi and northern Alabama this is a little bit of a shrunken risk zone but it still exists as we go into Wednesday I do think our worst threat is going to come late Tuesday night though as this low level wind really kicks on up a 50 to 60 um, knot jet that lower level jet really kicking on up there you can see it there through parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley as we go Tuesday night and into Wednesday before heading eastward. So that does create that wind shear, the changing of direction of those winds with height in the atmosphere. Another thing that we look at for severe weather is dew points. And using the Euro model, look at those dew points. You know, for severe weather, essentially what you're looking for in these numbers on screen is anywhere from around 55 plus. And of course, the higher of a number you get, the better chance for severe weather you get. And as we go towards Tuesday around the midday time frame, atmosphere really getting primed up here from northeast Arkansas all the way to southern uh, Michigan there. As those dew points climb into the upper 50s, even the low 60s, Note Notice, though, we probably don't have storms yet, or at least severe storms at this point, because we're still watching that line of those much colder temperatures and those much lower dew points, those drier dew points and that drier air mass to the northwest, waiting on that to converge and kind of meet up with this warmer air mass. And look at how it does so. This is in the middle of the night. As we go, say, around midnight, 1 a.m. Tuesday night, going into our Wednesday morning, a very strong cold front now progressing through parts of central Missouri, I mean, parts of northern Illinois, bringing that lightning, bringing that you know the fury of some of these storms potentially over that region so it's definitely a good idea to be staying weather alert over here as this cold front kind of brings that drier air on in as we go towards our Wednesday morning but we continue to notice that boundary crash through Ohio all the way on down there to northern Mississippi into our Wednesday um, as that front heads eastward. Here's where the European model is predicting lightning. So this is kind of what I'm looking at for that storm concentration. It looks like the best chance for thunderstorms, to be honest with you, as we go late Tuesday and in towards our Wednesday, is not going to be far into Michigan, but through parts of southern Michigan, all the way on back there into parts of southern Missouri. That's really where some of these storms could develop. The potential for some tornadoes, but also some gusty winds and hail, not out of the question as it looks right now. We continue to watch that kind of slide southeastward. By the time you're waking up Wednesday morning, might be a rude awakening there through parts of northern Kentucky, far southern Indiana, and then eventually this will continue to kind of sink southeastward as we go throughout the day Wednesday while overall weakening. And again, as the ingredients get a little bit weaker, we see this storm just weaken a little bit overall and towards the southern end and have struggles maintaining that southern end. I think this will weaken the thunderstorm just a little bit as we go in towards our Wednesday. My severe weather scale goes from 1 to 7. This is what we're looking at right now. I've got up to a 3 on the scale for Tuesday, and this does include Tuesday night. So if you live anywhere from far northeastern Texas, but really they're from eastern Oklahoma and northern Arkansas, all the way on up there through Michigan, I want everybody there to stay weather alert as we go late Tuesday and into our Tuesday night, especially if you live there in southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, southwest Indiana, increased probability there for an all-hazard severe weather threat. As we go into Wednesday, just because the Storm Prediction Center maintains that slight risk potential there into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky, I do have that lingering three on my scale. I really was thinking of just keeping this at a two, though, and I've been doing that recently. So if there's a weaker of the two days, it's definitely, I think, Wednesday. For now, anyway, things can change as we get closer. But right now, it does look like Wednesday will be a little bit broader of a threat there over parts of the southern Ohio Valley, all the way on down there and towards parts of the Mid-South region. Total snowfall as well, because we've got snowfall out of the system. By the time we go to the end of this week, a lot of snowfall adding on up there through parts of the Pacific Northwest and Mountain West. Some high elevations of the Cascades and high elevations there in Idaho and Montana picking up foot plus totals easily even up there in the mountains west of Denver and the Rockies there some spots getting a foot plus 
I want you to note this little snow stripe that comes out of this system as we go again, kind of Tuesday towards our Wednesday. Front parts of South Dakota all the way in over there into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Maybe some, you know, a very thin band of some two to four inch totals. Locally higher amounts are in the Upper Peninsula, closer to six inches, not out of the question. And then if you go kind of with the GFS scenario, remember it showed snow breaking out closer to Appalachia at the tail end of this event. That could bring a little bit more totals into those regions and the interior northeast than what the Euro is showing. Again, still some things to definitely pinpoint out of the storm. Another thing we're worried about is wind gusts, and that could trigger fire danger there over parts of West Texas and into parts of New Mexico as we go Monday in the afternoon, then as we go into Tuesday afternoon as well. Some of those gusts in New Mexico, especially with higher terrain, 55, 65, even 75 miles per hour. This is going to definitely trigger some wind advisories and high wind warnings as that stretch of wind moves through the southern plains. Notice those greens moving through parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa as we go through the end of the day Tuesday. Then as we go towards Wednesday, it looks like our strongest wind gusts, other than just broad 20 to 30 a lot uh, over a lot of the east in miles per hour here. There's some of those stronger gusts, 40 to 50 in the Great Lakes region Wednesday now. Once we go beyond the storm, the pattern just slips right on back to where we were before, and we get well above average over a lot of the country is what we're looking at here. So you can see there from parts of northern Texas, northern Louisiana, northern Mississippi, all the way on up there into the Great Lakes, especially Wisconsin and Michigan, Climate Prediction Center outlining this area for well above average temperatures being pushed on by some of those cooler than average temperatures, in fact, well below average temperatures in the west, and that could be the recipe we need for another bigger storm system, this time as we go into, you know, the early part of the following week. So this is as we go, you know, Sunday into Monday, March 3rd into March 4th, this is a long way out. You know, this looks kind of crazy, you know, a very big severe weather event stretching from the Mid-South all the way on up there to the Midwest with this Europe European model scenario here. Also some heavy snow wrapping around in the Dakotas. But the thing with this is, look at the GFS for this exact same time. I mean, it is showing a very similar looking system. So, you know, no one needs to panic out of this right now. But this is a concerning signal for potentially another similar or stronger storm down the line. If you want to stick with me through all the weather, please hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, Weather Bell trial in the description. I think I've said everything I need to say. One nation We're done. Weather.